Welcome to the Living Rock Podcast. Good morning, everyone. Happy Father's Day. Now, I'm not sure whether you ever wonder how preachers prepare for their messages, whether they kind of spend time kind of praying first or whether they kind of read the word first or speak to their friends first. And for me, when I started this message, I, I did what I think many preachers, I'm sure, do, where they spend a lot of time seeking kind of the illumination of truth and inspiration. And so I Googled it. And so I Googled, I Googled a sentence that said, give me some verses that will challenge Christian men on Father's Day. And I think actually what was interesting was the first two pages of what I saw in Google had lots of things for encouraging or for motivating or inspiring or blessing, but actually there was nothing there about challenging, which is strange because that's what I'd actually searched for. And God spoke to me through that actually, and I really felt stirred that actually it's hard, isn't it, as men sometimes to be challenged. We find it challenging when someone, a colleague maybe, or your children, or a friend, or a teacher, or dare I say it, your wife, brings a challenge. It can be difficult, can't it? And I wonder, why are we afraid of being challenged? What is it about being challenged as men that sometimes can make us feel a bit uncomfortable and even a little bit defensive? I'm sure none of us here have ever felt defensive, right? But if sometimes it can happen. And so I want to talk to you today about the importance of courage And actually how courage can help us receive challenges, give challenges, and build community. And so this morning we're going to be in the book of 1 John. If you want to turn to that now, that would be great. The book of 1 John. This was a letter written by the Apostle John, who's well known for writing the Gospel of John, the three letters that he wrote, and then obviously the book of Revelation as well. And John is known as the disciple who Jesus loved. But that actually wasn't the first nickname that John had. Does anyone know what the first nickname that Jesus gave to John was? The Son of Thunder. In fact, James and John, the brothers, were nicknamed the Sons of Thunder by Jesus. And that makes you wonder, right, that what must have happened to John for him to have gone from this first impression that Jesus had as a a Son of Thunder to then writing about himself as a disciple that Jesus loved. I mean, it's kind of a bit audacious, really. You've got to be quite confident to be writing a book of the Bible about the risen Saviour and to declare yourself the disciple that Jesus loves. But that is what happened when he spent three years with Jesus. That he saw the transforming power and his overwhelming feeling, in spite of his impulsiveness, his maybe aggression, his vengefulness early on in that relationship, was transformed into being the disciple who Jesus loved. And my belief this morning is there are many men here who need to have the courage to believe that you can speak over yourself that I am a disciple who Jesus loves. Okay, we're going to read from 1 John. Let's pull that slide out. There we go. 1 John 1, 5 to 9. I'll read this together this from the NIV. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. God is light. He doesn't just emit light. He's not just bright. He is light. He's completely pure. And darkness itself isn't actually a thing. Darkness is the absence of light. It's defined as the absence of light. And don't forget, John here is writing to Christians, which means he was writing to people who were saved, but perhaps weren't having the courage to walk in the light of God. And I want to use a quick illustration this morning. I'll get some volunteers. Let some of the kids come up for me. Lexi, Izzy, Eddie. 
Boys, come up here as well. So what's going to happen is I'm going to take Lexi, who's my daughter. I'm going to blindfold her. No health and safety problem here at all. She's my daughter, so I take the full responsibility for whatever's going to happen. Um, I'm going to move this out of the way. So I want all the kids just to come and stand here for me. So you stand facing next to that. Can you come and stand here? You can stand here. No, I can stand here. You'll find that. And yeah, Finney just that's great. So what's going to happen is Lexi is in darkness. And I'm her father. And I'm going to call her towards me. And she's going to try and get to me. So let's give it a go, shall we? Okay, off we go. Come to me, Lexi. Right this way. This way, Lex. No, no, this way. Turn, turn left. No, 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 other way. No, no, come back this way again. This way, towards me. Listen to my voice. Listen to my voice. This way. No, this way. This way. This way. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> Off you go. Well done. Good job, team. Now, imagine how much easier that would have been if Lexi had been in the light. And oftentimes, there are many of us here as believers who stumble around in that darkness, afraid of being in the light. And it's painful because you bump into things, you fall over things, and you know the voice of God. You might be saved here this morning and you know what his voice sounds like, but it's hard if you're not walking in the light. But of course, what's difficult for us stepping into the light of God is that when we do that, everything is revealed. The light reveals everything. And for many of us, we feel maybe ashamed of what the light's going to reveal. The challenges that we know of ourselves, the the anxieties, the frustrations, the disappointments, the secret sin that may be in your life this morning. But also, the light reveals who God has made us to be. The light reveals who we truly are. The light reveals something about us that only God has created within us that we may or may not know about ourselves unless we step into his light. And so my first encouragement to you all this morning is this. God doesn't shine his light on us to condemn us. That's the level, the, 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 the lie the devil tells you. God shines his light to free us. That we might know the truth of who we were made to be. And those things that do hold us back, because there are things that hold us back, will fall away from us. And the reality is that as men, we can often feel alone, can't we? Many of us have experienced people in our lives who've said that we're not good enough. You can't do things, that you can't succeed. And so sadly, we find men who are so willing now, so unwilling now to even engage through fear of the fact, I'm going to fail anyway, so why should I bother trying with this? Why do I bother trying to lead in? And that's part of the problem with with pride, and actually that holds us back, doesn't it? The devil isolates us. And that's why often suicide is a predominantly male thing. Because men get isolated and are alone. But if you remember what it says in 1 John 7, so 1 John 1, 7, it says, if we walk in the light, we are both with him and with each other. There is fellowship, it says. God doesn't save us and bring us into the light to just, to just walk with him alone. But to be in this community, you are not alone. And so my second encouragement to you is that when you step into his light this morning, you're not alone. You're with him and you're with us. And the good thing is that once we're saved, our spirits are reprogrammed with a new destination. We're programmed with a heavenly destination, like a spiritual sat-nav. And the thing is, even if... You go wrong and you fall back into darkness and behaviours or habits that are not good for you. As soon as you step back into that light again, the satnav just reroutes and reprograms and points us back on the same destination that God has already ordained for us because we know him. You're rerouted back to where he wants you to go. And so this morning we need to have courage to follow him. Now, Because the kids are all in with us, we're going to play a bit of a game. I want everyone in the church to stand up. We're going to play a game. The game is called Jesus Says. We're going to test out your ability to follow Jesus. Hopefully you all know how to play Simon Says. This is the same, but with Jesus. So, very simple. I'm going to trust you all to play fair. 
if you get it wrong, you sit down, you're out, okay? Those of you that feel really uncomfortable, get it wrong on the first go, you can just sit down. It's going to be easy for you. So, well, if you win, you get no prize. Just eternal glory in heaven. Okay, so let's start. Jesus says, raise your hand. Jesus says, raise your other hand. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. No, you're all right. Sit down. That was terrible. You were out on the third one. We'll give you one more chance. Okay. Jesus says, be on your, on your finger on your nose. Jesus says, hold one ear. Jesus says, hold the other ear. Do this. A few of you are out. Sit down. Now I can see of you. Sit down. That doesn't count. Jesus says, jump up and down. Jesus says, sit down. Stand up. You're out. Okay, you can stay. Sit down. It's hard, right? It's difficult. To follow Jesus is not always easy because in amongst the message from him, there are other messages of things that happen and come out to us, isn't there? But actually, as we truly follow him, as we hear his voice and we step into the light, he puts us in community with other believers and he sets our sat-nav back on the route he intended for us in his plans and his destiny as we listen to his voice. Okay, we're now going to turn to the next passage of scripture. This is 1 John 2, 12 to 14. Now, this set of verses talks about three types of believer that I want us to think about on Father's Day. I'm going to read this together. I'm writing to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. I'm writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I'm writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, dear children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. And I write to you, young men, Because you are strong and the word of God lives in you. And you have overcome the evil one. Three types. Children, young men and fathers. Let's just unpack the first one of those. Children. Children, these are the boys. The ones that are new to the faith. Or maybe their faith is just still immature. They haven't grown into being young men yet. But they know who Jesus is, it says. I am writing to you, dear children, because you have been forgiven on account of his name. They know him. They know the Father, these young children. And really the main question here this morning, in some ways the only question, is do you know him? Do you know the Father? Whatever your earthly father may have been like, whatever kind of father you might be, whatever kind of mother you might be, whatever your circumstances, the question to all of us this morning is, do you know the Father? Are you in the light? And at this time, I wanted just to pause and enable us just to respond. That if you are someone who knows God and can say that you're saved, think about the areas that you want to step back into his light. But if you don't know God this morning, when you listen to the words of this song that my wife Helen and the band are going to sing, And if you know the song, feel free to join in. But otherwise, just let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, if during that time you really felt God speak to you, maybe for the first time you heard the voice of the Father and you've been stumbling around in the darkness and suddenly you heard him, my encouragement to you is, hopefully you've come with someone this morning, you can just tell them, that that meant something to you and you want to explore this further or if not there'll be people over in the connect corner at the end or come and speak to me or, or Rich or any of the other leaders of the church to just explore that further don't miss that opportunity okay kids I've got some colouring for you here so what you've got you've got a picture here which will be a picture eventually of your dad okay when you take it to the back can you go and hand those out for me Go to the back, kids go to the back with some colouring. And what we, I want you to draw a bit of what your dad looks like. Maybe draw the clothes he's wearing or the clothes you'd like him to wear so he was a bit cooler. Um, maybe draw some of the things that he likes to do around the outside. That would be great. And we're just going to wrap up now with a couple more, more challenges before we, we close this morning service. So we talked about the children. These are the young, new believers that have come through. And there's also in this verse the young men. These are the people who are winning individual victories. They're seeing battles kind of won. They're seeing 
things change, and they are full of youthful energy and zeal. Often we think of these people as sat in this side of the room, but that isn't always the case. There are some energetic people here too, I believe. But these young men are pursuing God. They've got a deeper faith than just the children, but they've still got more to come. And then we have the fathers. These are called in some translations the veterans. These are the ones with a long history in God. They've known him for a long time. And their journeying with God has allowed them to father the children and the young men and to bring them through in the faith. They've battled and overcome many things. And every battle that they have overcome is a battle that these young men and these children don't have to face on their own anymore. And so as I was preparing today, there are two challenges I want to bring off the back of the two encouragements we had earlier. The first challenge is this. Are you spiritually out of shape? How's your six pack doing? I know you do, mate. My six pack is going particularly well. I care for it so much that I wrap it in a layer of fat to make sure it's safe. But seriously, how is your spiritual health? You see, I think some of us who are here this morning are spiritually out of shape. We're a little flabby around the middle spiritually. And without God's light, we are living without fellowship with him and with each other. And how do you know if that's you? Well, it might be that this shows itself with a lack of initiation, maybe a lack of routine or discipline, maybe low energy. You feel like you lack purpose. Maybe you lack a spiritual pattern. Coming to church on a Sunday is the best you've got, and even that is a bit hit and miss. I think it's also important to acknowledge that this church is blessed with many amazing godly women. You may even be married to one of them. I definitely am married to one of them. And I know sometimes as men it can be easier as our wives step up, lean into the spirit, that we can kind of just lean back a little bit. We can even pretend to ourselves that actually we're doing so to encourage our wives to do more. And actually by us not doing as much that they can be even closer to God. But that's a lie. In fact, when men are apathetic or disengaged, everyone loses. You see, it's not a competition. It's not about one or the other. We can both get closer to God. We can both lean in to who he says we are. We can both grow together. It's not a zero-sum game. In fact, when husbands and wives partner well together, when men and women in the church partner as team, that is when the, the glory of God is truly revealed. That is when change really comes. That is when things are different because we're playing our God-given roles and we're loving and spurring each other on towards him. When we sit back as men and allow the world to lead our family, the world to lead our children, the other people to inform our worldview, we develop that flabby middle and a dad bod. And my encouragement to all of you here is that rather than a dad bod, you can have a father figure. That actually, when you look to your father in heaven and you emulate what he does, your life will be transformed. Because the, our Father in heaven initiates, he engages. And when we step up, stand up, step out, and allow others to challenge us, we will get called into something greater in him. And that's my second challenge today. We need to create rites of passage. When we think about the progression of boys to fathers and the progression of girls to mothers, one of the big differences between those two transitions is how those transitions are marked. Now, men get taller, have a deeper voice, maybe grow some facial hair, where females go through much more significant physical changes that tend to mark that progression more obviously. They start their period. They may even get pregnant. And so the challenge for men is that we need to be more intentional about creating rites of passage for men to move between that children to young men and young men to fathers. Now, I'm not saying that women don't also need to be called out as godly women. Of course, women do as well. I'm just saying that as it's Father's Day, as we look across this room, there are men in this room who've never been called out into that next stage, who've never had someone lead them from being children to being young men or from young men into being fathers. And I'm not talking about biological fathers, but that might be the case as well. 
We described earlier these men who've journeyed with God, who have gone deep. They may be biological parents, they may be grandfathers or uncles, they may be brothers, they may not have biological children of their own yet, but they can call people through. And so my encouragement to us this morning is, how are we thinking about calling us through on that journey? We need to show courage. We need to not be afraid to show our own weaknesses, to show our failures, but also our victories and train these young men for battle in the lessons we have learned. If we don't, we'll be left with a generation of boys who never became men, who don't know how to create an environment at home where their wife and children can flourish and grow without them feeling insecure or weak or threatened. We can all grow together. And on Father's Day, I want the men especially to think about how can you step up How can you be confident? How can you call yourself a disciple who Jesus loved? Now, kids, if you're drawing some pictures, just look at the words on the screen. Children. Hello, children. Okay. There's some words on the screen here. I want you to write some of these words on your pictures of your dad for me. Pick a word that you think describes your father. And those of you in the room, maybe think of some of these words as well. Because actually, whatever your dad might tell you, your dad loves it when you say positive things about him. He loves it when you say these kind of things about him. It takes courage to hear a challenge. It takes courage to step into the light, courage to follow his commands, and courage to reach across the aisle and call men around us into the next stage of their development. And the word courage comes from the Latin word core, which means heart. Courage literally means to tell your whole story with your whole heart. It's about wholeheartedness. It's about vulnerability. It's about being willing to show who God has made you to be and not be afraid of that. And this morning, I want us all to show courage. And so we're going to do that right now. We're actually going to, everybody, get out your phones. I know it's rare in church to be told to do that, right? Get out your phones. Right, everyone, everyone get your phone out. See, what I want you to do is to take a moment and to send an encouragement to somebody, a young man, a child, or a father. And here's some example things you might want to start writing. Take a moment and just send a message of encouragement. It could be to someone in this room. It could be to someone outside of this room. And you can explain to them why you did this later. But I want there to be a surge of courageous encouragement this morning. I want there to be a feeling as we all step into the light, as we all trust in who God's called us to be. We can just send a quick message. So I'm just going to pause for a few minutes. The band is going to play a bit of music. As we just take a moment and just send a message to someone that you want to encourage a child who needs to know that there is more of God for them, a young man that needs to see that his one-off battles can become a lifestyle of change, and a father who needs to know that his role is to call these young men and these children through and to continue to go deep with his Father in heaven. Just take a few minutes. It's great having a day once a year when you can mark... Things like fatherhood, motherhood, other events throughout the year. But the reality is, if it's just one day, we know that's not enough, don't we? And hopefully you've felt God speak to you this morning and say to you that you are a disciple who Jesus loved, who Jesus loves. That you can be courageous that you can reveal your whole heart because of your confidence in who he's made you to be. That you might have started your journey with him this morning for the first time. You may have walked with him for 20, 30, 40 years. But all of us are on a journey still. Our sat-navs are still programmed to go to our final destination with him. And we need to create a community culture that is constantly encouraging and challenging and calling us into something greater of God because we've not seen it all yet, have we, church? We've not seen everything that God has to offer us. In fact, we've probably barely scratched the surface of what he wants to do. I pray that sending these kind of encouragements won't be a one-off thing once a year, 
sending an encouraging Father's Day card once a year, that that will be enough, that actually we will shift our culture and men and women will call each other through, from new salvation through to deep, rich faith. Can I ask all the men, boys, children to stand up? And if you're willing and able to, I want you to come down to the front and stand here with me. All of you come down to the front. And while you do that, I'm going to read these verses over you. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the people. But the Lord rises upon you. Come right close, guys. Come right in. His glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Do you believe, men of God, do you believe that actually this is true of you? That darkness covers the people. Come right in, guys. Come right, make more space. Come right in. Come right in. Boys as well. Bring the boys up. Do you, do you believe that we as men are called to do more? And you may have been told by lots of people that you're not good enough that you're a failure, that you'll never be anything, that you can't be successful. But God says, I love you. I love you. What I want us to do now is I want us to read four sentences together as a promise to each other, as a promise to this church, to the many mighty women of God who sit watching us now, but most importantly to God and to ourselves. Let's just say these words together. We will stand up for our Lord Jesus. We will step out in faith for our families and communities. We will serve his purposes every day. We will live as wholehearted and courageous men of God. And if you just turn and face the back, the words are there again. I want you to say it one more time. And ladies, I'd love you to stand, to reach out your hands, to pray blessing and look I know there are challenges at times it's hard sometimes you may have challenges in your marriage challenges with other men in your life that are not God honoring men my encouragement to you is we need your encouragement we need your confidence we need you to stand with us and help us in what we are promising now so men let's say this again we will stand up for our Lord Jesus we will step out in faith for our families and communities We will serve his purposes every day. We will live as wholehearted and courageous men of God. We're going to go into a response song now. Please feel free to turn back and face the front and ritual leaders. Thanks for joining us today. Search for us online and get information about upcoming events and more great teaching.